Welcome to Specific Love. I have some future projects in mind that's going to require a little bit of burning and a little bit of color on each of the projects. So I want to try a little bit of Sosugi Ban on some pine and some cedar and then go back and add a little bit of color to them to see if we can really make it pop. Let's do this. Now when you're adding color to wood, there's two ways to do it. You can add a stain or you can add a dye. Now I prefer the stain because it's simple. You open the can, stir it a couple times and you can just apply it. Versus a dye, in many cases you have to mix an alcohol or a lacquer thinner and it just takes a lot of additional time. So I'm gonna use a stain for this process. Now the pine that I'm using is already pretty smooth but I still might sand it down just a little bit. But the cedar picket that I'm using, it is quite rough. So I'm gonna have to sand it down a good bit. You can use a hand sander, orbital sander, even a drum sander if you have it. Now I brought the wood over to the miter saw because I'm going to cut these down into one foot sections and that should be a little bit easier to work with. I have a blue, a red, a white, and a gray, so I'm going to need four of these. Alright, now let's take these outside and give them a nice burn. Now we're just going to take a paper towel and gently go over all these to remove just the top layer of all this black stuff. Now here's two things to keep in mind looking at these. This is the pine and this is the cedar. The cedar came out a lot darker than the pine, but remember that it was a little bit of a darker wood to begin with. Also, if you look at both of these, neither one of them is overly charred. I didn't want to overly cook these, but this should be good enough for what we need to do. Now we're going to start off with the blue. And then we're going to put it on the pine and then wipe it off really quick with the towel and do the same with the cedar. And as you can see with both, it has applied a really thick coat of the blue, which has taken away a little bit of the charred look. So. Let's see if we, what we can do to uh, make that better. Now I've given both of these a few hours to dry, but I want to go over this with some 400 grit sandpaper just to see if I can make either the black or the blue pop just a little bit more. Well, it appears that I'm mainly just getting off the ash from the burn, but it did give it, I think, more of like an antique look from just the light sanding. Over on the, this was a cedar, and on the pine, it seems like that the burn actually might be coming out a little bit better than on the cedar. Maybe because the cedar was already a dark wood. Now I want to do one last test and add some polyurethane on the wood just to see exactly what that's going to do. But I'm also going to put some tape down the middle of each of these so we can see a, the great contrast between the two. Now we're going to do the same process with the red. Now just looking at these, I can already tell a major difference between the cedar and the pine. The cedar seem to absorb it deep into some of these grooves and pores within the wood. It makes it look almost, I don't know, like an, I guess like an antique type red, but just really, really looks good. Uh, the pine, it's coming out decent. I think if we give it some time to dry, it'll probably look good as well, but it looks really, really good on the cedar. Next up, we're going to be trying out a whitewash. Just like the other stains, we're going to wipe it on, then immediately wipe it off with a paper towel. liking how that's coming out on that cedar. If you can see it right here, you have the main white in the wood, but then you have the charred edges as it wraps around this grain structure, but then the whole thing is covered in like an antique white. This looks really cool. Let's try it on the pine. It 
looking good, but wow, this cedar, that cedar just looks really, really good. Now we're gonna use some weathered gray. Now the weathered gray may not have been such a great idea because it's a dark color and you're going on material that's already burned and it's dark. It kind of just all washed together. So it's a little bit more difficult to see the difference in colors. You can see a little bit, but I probably would avoid the weathered gray. Now I was looking at the red and I was quite amazed at how it just looks amazing compared to the blue. Now if you look at the blue, most of the grain structure that we did here is just straight versus the red has a lot more shape to it. So I decided to go back and redo the blue, but this time use a piece of cedar that has a little more shape to it. And if you notice on both of these, they look amazing in the light. And that's because of the shape. So if you plan on doing some of this, make sure you have the wood that has a lot of shape to it and that way it should pop a lot better. Now let's look at the two pieces we did the poly on. The dry is up here, the poly is on the bottom. Now I've given it some time to dry, and if you notice here that the darker burned areas pops a lot better with the poly on versus the no poly. Same thing on the cedar. So if you're gonna do this process, definitely have some kind of a polyurethane on the top and it'll look a lot better. Now since the poly looks so good on the blue, we're gonna go ahead and add it to the red and to the white. So here's the finished product. We have the red in the middle here, which looks amazing. Then we have the blue over here, which looks pretty good itself. I really like how it really makes these curves in the wood just pop. We have the whitewash over here. It looks pretty good. And the gray that I didn't like initially, when I went back, I decided to again put some poly on it and it made it pop as well. So overall, I think this is a good turnout. We have an idea that the red probably works best for this setup, with blue maybe coming in second place, and then the whitewash, and then the gray. But overall, I'm excited to what we have just learned. Now this video is a little bit different than some of the ones I normally do. This was a little more experimental. I was learning at the same time as you were. So let me know if you like this style, or if you don't, put a comment down below, and just tell me your thoughts in the process. If you like it more, maybe we'll try this a little more often. And if you don't, well, then we won't. In any case, I hope you can get out and shop and have fun building. Now I brought the wood over to the miter saw because we're going to cut these down into some one foot sections and that should be a little bit easier to work with. Now I'm going to be using a white, a gray, a... and I completely forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> so shiggy bon. So shiggy bon. Alright. A gray, a gray. And I completely forgot what I was going to say. I hope you like this more of an experiment. Perfect timing.